Uh, so 7.6 is converting units. This is something that is going to keep coming back over and over. At the very beginning of the algebra class, we did a little bit of this. We did some of this in Math 8, uh, did some of this in high school. So if you can pick this up the first time around, it's just going to make things a whole lot easier. Before I jump into like the official like messing around with units and all that type of thing, just want to point out, if we were to have like a 4 and a 4, and you, I probably wouldn't write this if I were you, but if we have a fraction that's 4 over 4, do you agree we can cancel those out? And it becomes like a 1 over 1, or just really a 1. But the point I'm trying to make is if you have something in the numerator of a fraction and you have something in the denominator of a fraction, if it's the same thing, you could just cancel those. Agreed? Yeah. And that's kind of the backbone behind how the book tries to explain how to convert units. Uh, the first thing isn't really the theory behind it. It's just going to be a whole bunch of different conversion factors or like conversion ratios that will um, help you be able to convert from one thing to another. So useful conversion factors. And this is where, as you do the homework, I'd keep this page of your notes open uh, so you can real easily see the things and just kind of jump back and forth. The more you have in your head, the more it will help you kind of for down the road. But some of these aren't insanely common. Uh, but if we were to have 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters is the same as 1 centimeter. Nice. So 10 millimeters is 1 centimeter. If you were to take how many centimeters in a meter? 100. So if you have a meter stick, it counts up from 0 to 100, and then that would be, so 100 centimeters is 1 meter. And the number of meters in a kilometer, so I'm going to put a 1 km on the right, how many meters in a kilometer? 1,000, nice. So 1,000 meters equals 1 kilometer. So that's going to be like metric for length. I'm going to leave a little space, and I'm still doing length, but uh, feet in a mile. You want to know that one? 5,000 something. 5,280. 5,280 feet equals 1 mi. You don't have to, but I just thought if we're going from metric to like the English. The way I keep that one straight is I can remember the 5,000. The 2 and the 8 together, 2 plus 8 gives you 10, right? So if you remember the 5, 2, and then, okay, plus 8 gives you the 0, the 10. It's weird, but it works for me. How many feet in the yard? Three. Nice. So 3 feet equals 1 yard. So those are our length. I'm going to make a second column that's going to be like weights. So ounces in a pound. Anyone know that one? 18. Close, 16. 16, nice, 16, so 16 OZ, you were close, equals 1 LB, and I don't know what 18 ounces is, it'd be like 1.125 pounds, so maybe, alright, next one, if we do 2,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds equals 1 what? Ton, nice. One ton. So those are going to be our only two weight ones. My last little section is going to be volume. And when you're cooking, you often use cups. cups. <laughs> yep, so I'm going to say eight ounces. So eight. Now here's the problem. We did eight ounces up here, right? Or we did 16 ounces there. Um, that's going to be like ounces for weight. We also have ounces for volume. So often they'll do like eight FL and then an OZ, so 8 fluid ounces equals 1 cup. And then if you have 4 cups, nice, same as 32 ounces, or 1 quart, so 1 QT for 1 quart. Anyone know how many ounces are in a gallon? 1. 128. So it's fluid ounces, so they're going to do FL and then OZ. Sometimes they just do the OZ, but that gives you one gallon. And then the last thing, quarts in a gallon. Four. Nice. So, so I'm going to say four QT, four quarts. How many in a liter? How many equals cups one gallon. in a liter? Two cups in a liter. A liter oh, no, I'm thinking pint. <laughs> um, a liter is a, almost the same as a quart. 
So a, a liter is real close to a quart. Four, like four yeah, like a two liter bottle is 69.7, 67.9, something like that ounces. Where two quarts would be 64. So it's close. So it's like so jumping ahead, now we're actually going to do the math behind how do we do these conversions. So Roman numeral two is converting numbers. So converting numbers, and I'm just going to do a couple examples. So example one, 3.1 miles, so if you're looking at like doing a 5K race, 3.1 miles is how many feet? And some people, they just try to look at how can they all right, I have miles, I have feet, I'm going to take and cram numbers together. That can be a little bit dangerous. I'd say look at it this way. Um, if you have 3.1 miles, so 3.1 miles, that's what we're starting with. Do you agree? I could take and put this over 1, and it doesn't change it any. So I'm going to do that. And now, hold on, nope. So now if I go back and look before, we're trying to change this to feet, so I have this guy right here is my conversion ratio between feet and miles, yes? Yeah. So you'll get people that are going to combine that 3.1 and the 5,280. They do it a lot of different ways. Some of you, maybe it jumps out in your head. But trust me, when you get to like harder things, you're going to want to know the steps. Um, so I have this 5,280 feet is one mile. So I can write it this way. I can either do, and I wouldn't write this yet, I can either say 5,280 feet is one mile. So I could write it that way. Or do you agree I could write it as though one mile is 5,280 feet? That I could write it as a rate. And I'm going to rewrite my green fraction, so 3.1 miles. So I wouldn't write this down yet. I'll give you a second. But if we have that. Now, the question is, which one of those two can I cancel things out? This top one here, can I cancel out any units? Do I have any units in the numerator and in the denominator? Yes. I have what's in the top of the a fraction and the bottom of a fraction? One. Come on, people. What unit is in the top no, and the bottom? Miles. Miles. That was ugly. Okay, but I have this miles here and I have a miles there, right? So going back to what I did at the very beginning, like the 4 over 4, we can cancel those out. So I can say, all right, I'm going to cancel this miles with this miles. Now the only units that are left are feet. And are they in the numerator or the denominator? Numerator, they're on the top. So if we're going to multiply those two fractions, you can just do 3.1 times 5,280. And that gives me 16,368. 16,368. Now in my denominator, I denominators I have 1 times 1. You agree that just gives me 1? So my final answer is 16,368 feet over 1, which you can just leave that off then. So the key is, our miles dropped out. The only units that were left with our feet, which is what we were trying to get, so we're done. Um, we know we did it right. If instead we tried writing our conversion ratio the second way here on the bottom, then it won't cancel that. We have miles in the numerator, miles in the numerator. We can't cancel out miles, right? So now if we combine those fractions, we end up with like a mile squared, a miles times miles in the numerator, a feet in the denominator. That's just messed up. Agreed? So then you know this isn't the way to combine the things. You want to always combine the things in a way that make the units cancel out. Should I give you a second to copy down that top one? Yes. So I want to try one more. So say example two, 96 fluid ounces. 96 fluid ounces is how many gallons? So 96 fluid ounces is how many gallons? So we'd start just by writing out our 96 fluid ounces. And to see how we can cancel stuff, we could always take that and put it over 1. Agreed? Now we're trying to get a final answer that has units of gallons, right? So if we go back to our conversion ratio, we want to have something that's going to end up with gallons and ounces in it if we can. So if I go back here, I have gallons and ounces. It'll be purple kind of down here. Agreed? 
But if I want to end up with gallons in the numerator, I have to put gallons in the numerator of my conversion ratio. So if I want gallons up here, I have to do gallons divided by ounces, or fluid ounces. And that conversion ratio is one gallon is 128 fluid ounces. Do our units cancel? Yes. Yes. So we have fluid ounces there, fluid ounces there. Now we're just left with gallons, and gallons in the numerator. So now my fraction becomes 96 times 1, so 96 over 1 times 128. And now you can reduce this kind of in your head. You could punch it into your calculator using your fraction key. I'm fine with you doing that. Uh, you could punch it and get a decimal. If you do one of those, you'll end up getting a 0.75 or a 3 fourths. So our final answer then is that it's 3 fourths of a gallon. That there's 3 fourths of a gallon. How are we doing? Does that make sense to people? Yeah. So.